I'm Scott. Welcome back to my home and my kitchen. You know, one of the reasons I like doing these video demonstrations of recipes is that I get to share some of my favorite things with the world. Another reason I like doing the videos is I get to connect with so many people out there that take the time to write in and ask me to prepare a particular recipe for them. I love it. And recently I received an email from a lady named Lori in Switzerland. And she asked me if I would show my recipe for a cobbler. She said, use the fruit of your choice. I'm going to choose to use peaches and make a delicious peach cobbler. So let's get started immediately with the recipe. I have a heavy um, stainless steel uh, saucepan. I'm going to heat that over a medium high heat. And in the first step, what we're going to need is six cups of fresh uh, peaches. If you choose to make a blackberry cobbler or whatever the fruit you're going to use, you're going to need six cups of that your choice. In addition to the peaches, we're going to need a quarter cup of water and one and a half cups of sugar. Those are going to go into the pan first. After that, we're going to need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're going to need about a quarter cup of sugar and a pinch of salt, cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg. So in our pan, I'm going to add our peaches directly in there. And they already smell good. I love the way peaches smell. We're going to add our water, the one quarter cup, and our one and a half cups of sugar. I'm going to leave this over a medium high heat. We're going to stir it constantly. It's going to come up to a boil. And as soon as it starts to boil rapidly, we're going to lower the temperature down to a medium, medium low and let it simmer until all of the fruit is nicely tender. And that's going to depend on how ripe your fruit is. The peaches that I have, we're in the middle of summer right now. So the peaches that I have are very tender, very sweet. Um, so they're not going to take that long to cook. So it's really going to be a matter of touch. And remember that once we get this cobbler assembled, it's going to go into the oven and cook for a little while. So you don't want them completely mush before you start to assemble your cobbler. So I'm going to let these cook just a little bit. And while we're doing that, in a bowl, I'm going to take my three tablespoons of all-purpose flour the quarter cup of sugar, the pinch of allspice, the pinch of cinnamon, and a pinch of nutmeg. I like to grind my own nutmeg. Um, it's a good tip with spices. When you can buy them whole, do, and grind them as you need them. It just keeps the flavor more like it needs to be. And a pinch of salt. I'm just going to combine this with the fork and as soon as our peaches uh, boil and then simmer for a little bit we'll add this mixture to the peaches. The peaches have just come to a nice uh, rapid boil. I'm going to reduce the temperature down to medium to medium low and I'm also starting to preheat my oven to 400 degrees which where, that's where we'll bake the, um, the cobbler. Alright so we're going to let this simmer until the desired tenderness is achieved. Um, like I said, you want them sort of broken down slightly, but not too mushy. All right, as you can see, the peaches are getting nicely tender. The skins are starting to fall off, which is just fine. They'll break down. Um, but we have little bits, um, a little bit of softness around the edges, but still a little bit of bite to the fruit, which is exactly what we want. So that mixture we made of the flour and the spices that we've combined, we're going to add that right in to our peaches. And we're going to stir this constantly until we get a very thick syrup-like consistency that won't take very long, just about a minute or two. Our filling is just getting to be almost the consistency of apple pie filling, which is exactly what we want. And it took about a minute and a half. I just wanted to make sure I cooked all that raw flour flavor out of that and combined it well with the fruit. So into a, um, this is about a 9 by 14 or 8 by 8 by 10, I guess, um, baking dish. We're going to pour our filling. Perfect. All right, now let's get started on making the, the top. Okay, for a lot of cobblers sometimes you see that they actually have a bottom crust and a top crust. I feel like that's not really traditional. When I actually look back at historic cookbooks, um, they don't end up, they don't use a bottom crust, which is typical for that, for that actual period. So mine has just a top crust. And the way you make that is you take one cup of all-purpose flour, right into a bowl and you combine that with one half cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, 
We're going to need two teaspoons of baking powder and make sure that your baking powder is fresh, that you bought it fairly, fairly recently. And three quarters cup of milk. You can use whole milk or skim. It really doesn't matter. And with a spatula or spoon, just combine that until you get sort of a biscuit dough consistency. So once you've got your batter combined, it's, you might see a few lumps in there, and that is just fine. As this cooks, the liquid will actually incorporate itself into those um, lumps of flour, and they will disappear during the cooking process. So in a very casual manner, take this batter and just kind of go right over the top. Jackson Pollock. That's what you want to be thinking. We got the cobbler completely covered with the batter. It looks really good and this is just how it needs to look. I'm going to stick this in the oven at 400 degrees for 45 minutes. When it's nicely browned on top and smells delicious, it's going to be ready and we'll take it out and taste it. All right, 30 minutes is just up. The top is nicely browned, which is exactly what you're looking for. And I am going to have to cut into this because peach cobbler, cobbler is by far one of my favorite desserts. When I bake this, I put it on a cookie sheet just to make sure there's no spillover. And I like to serve this with a nice little dollop of vanilla ice cream. You could serve it um, just with a dusting of powdered sugar and a mint sprig, but here we go. All right, we're gonna give this sucker a taste. A little bit of the crust and a little bit of the peach and a little bit of the ice cream all in one bite. <laughs> you have to try this. It's a really simple recipe and absolutely delicious. And in a pinch, if you decide to make this during the winter months when fresh peaches aren't readily available, try to make it with frozen peaches. It won't have the same fla the flavor as fresh, but it'll be absolutely delicious. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and please feel free to email me, as Lori from Switzerland did, at scottindenver at msn.com. Should you want to make a comment on this particular episode, or ask me to prepare a recipe for you, I'll be happy to. All right, have a good day. Bye.